In this video, I'll run through a quick example of setting up a topology optimization run using SimCenter NASTRANS Solution 200. And this is the end outcome of my model, just showing this now. And I will switch over to my um, start model and run through the setup of creating this kind of analysis. So I've jumped over to the start of my model here, and I'll just run through um, a quick overview of it. Uh, basically, this is a solid part using solid elements. Um, perhaps it mimics a bell crank or rocker arm um, on a cantilever suspension. Um, there's a C bush here to mimic a spring, um, spring and damper. I'm constrained about this node here and connected to this hole here um, via a rigid element. Um, there's a rigid element at this hole here, and it is allow allowed to um, rotate about the axis of this hole. And then I have a 500 pound load on this hole um, in this direction, um, simulating uh, kind of a motion of the, the suspension. Now you can set up a topology optimization run using the command trees um, for model optimization and uh, the different options here, but I'm actually going to um, set this up as I work through creating an analysis set. Um, so I'll do it that way. So my first step here is going to be create a new analysis set. I'm going to use SimCenter Nastran and change the analysis type to uh, number eight design slash topology optimization. I can skip through my executive and uh, bulk data options dialogs, and that'll take me to the optimization options. And I'm gonna change the type to topology. Um, again, this is a solid model, and I wanted to optimize the structure of that solid. Um, this is gonna be a static run. I just have a load and constraint here. I'm gonna leave the goal to compliance and minimize. I'm going to bump up the cycles actually to 100 um, to basically give it more iterations to optimize the structure. And I'm going to leave the output interval to first and best. And first and best is basically going to give me an output set for um, the, the full solid here um, without any material taken away. So just the, the standard uh, static analysis and then the best will output um, the optimized structure at the best cycle it found. And my next step in this dialog is to select the topology regions. So I'll create a new topology region. Um, and in this case, I'm going to use um, the active elements and the active area is the part that gets optimized. Um, so in this case, I have broken up my, my solid into four different solids. Um, around the holes, there's a, a buffer zone, I'm gonna call it. And basically I want that to be unchanged. And the solid area in here is going to be what's optimized. Um, you select by element. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually use my method in solid to go ahead and grab the area in here. So this, again, this is the area that's going to be optimized. Um, and I'll just label this my active area. Um, and by default, these other areas are going to be frozen. So those will not be optimized. From here, I could actually uh, go on and, and move on and continue with the topology optimization run. Um, but I'm going to go into the manufacturing constraints a bit here. So from the manufacturing constraints, I can create a variety of different types, um, additive manufacturing, casting die direction, checkerboarding control, cyclic symmetry, extrusion, minimum size, maximum size, and planar symmetry. Uh, in this case, I'll create a simple uh, planar symmetry um, manufacturing constraint. It is kind of, um, it's called uh, in, in plane with the solid here. Um, so basically through the thickness, uh, the optimized shape should be symmetric, but I'll go ahead and, and set this anyway. I'll use the global XY plane and I'll just try and grab onto a midpoint of this solid here. And 
There we go. So I have my manufacturing constraint set there. So I'll just briefly go over a couple of these. Um, the additive manufacturing constraint, this would be like if you were 3D printing something, uh, basically what you would set is your build plate and the vertical direction and you choose a maximum angle of overhang that the material can have. Um, and that's dependent on your 3D printer. And the minimum maximum size or ones that I sometimes use, uh, basically you're setting um, the minimum or the maximum size. So no less than or no greater than, depending which one you select, um, basically a cross-sectional uh, thickness um, of the optimized structure. So I'm done with my manufacturing constraints here. I can move on. And there's only one thing more that I need to set. Um, basically the optimization limit. So this is going to be the goal of my optimization here. Uh, what I'll do is there's different types in here. Um, what I'm going to do for the baseline is just use weight. Um, so when I switch to weight, it fills the lower bound and upper bound with the overall weight of my model here. Um, and I'm just going to set the lower bound to basically 20% and the upper bound to 35%. So I really want to um, optimize this structure uh, to reduce a lot of the weight. So I'll just do times uh, 0 0.2, sorry, 0 0.2, and then uh, the upper bound times 0 0.35. And I'll do my, just title this weight reduction 20 to 35%. And I'm actually ready to run now, so I'll just double check that my constraint and loads were set. Um, and this one takes a bit of time to run, so I've already solved it. I'm just going to jump over to my model that I have the results in, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm back in my model with results, and basically I'm just showing a contour plot of um, cycle zero, which again is just... Uh, you know, before it's optimized, a baseline uh, static analysis, and I'm showing solid von Nisi stress. So this is what my contour plot would look like for that. And if I switch to uh, cycle 100, um, which is my best case, I can see how um, the solid von Nisi stress actually changes. Um, and this kind of gives you an idea of the load path. And what's nice for topology optimization is you get this output called normalized mass density. And what normalized mass density is, is um, basically at the beginning of the analysis, it sets every element's material to basically one or the full material is present. And as it's going through the cycles, it's removing material um, through optimization. So basically down to zero. So whatever is zero means that material was removed and therefore resolving the, the static analysis. Um, so as you can see, you know, I'm getting uh, different contours of where um, my normalized mass density is one and where it's very low. Um, so what's cool in FEMAP is you could so show something like a capped ISO surface. Um, and in here, I can set to positive cap and kind of um, remove or add material um, based on a threshold of whatever value my um, normalized mass density is. Um, so if I set it to about 0.25, you can see what material is there and what's not. So I just want to show one more thing here. Um, I'm going to switch back to uh, my contour plot and showing solid von Misi stress. And again, you can see at cycle 100, um, which is my optimized part, um, different values here. Uh, for my von Nisi stress. And what I'm going to do is go back to um, in my analysis set and put a um, limit stress on the optimization and see how that changes the part. I'm back in my start model here. 
in the optimization limits dialog under the uh, analysis set for the topology optimization run. Um, as you see, my weight reduction uh, limit was already selected. And so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and create a new um, element for stress strain um, limit. So I will drop this down to solid von Mises as my criteria. And I'm going to use the same method uh, for selecting the area of um, the active topology region. So I will use uh, in solid here, select my solid. And then I'll leave the lower bound at zero. And then my upper bound for the stress limit will be 22,000. So I'll go ahead and rerun the job as is with everything else the same. And we'll look at the change in results. So once again, switching back to the model with results, um, this is my baseline without stress. It was just a weight reduction. And you can see I'm showing a uh, solid von Mises stress at cycle 100. Um, so you see there's an area in here. Again, this is um, some of the area that is in the active and the region that has the limit stress that I added on um, for the second output. And it's pretty high. So we're, we're reaching, you know, above 30,000 uh, PSI there. And when I switch to um, the rerun where I added this limit constraint, I don't see um, any red areas you know, that are above basically 22,000. So um, these are probably getting close to 22,000. Again, these are in the, um, the area where I selected with the, um, the limit stress there. Um, so you can see how the load path actually changes. And, you know, I can do the same thing with the ISO surface and uh, redefine what my shape would look like.